Okay, this is Nick Snook here. I'm going through a whole bunch of my artwork and I decided to try to get it chronological. Uh, kind of my portfolio. So this is uh, the only piece I have left from high school. This was a scratchboard drawing I did. Uh, it was part of my portfolio to get into Kutztown State College. Uh, so that's the first. I, I did that in high school. You can see I had a bit of a weird sense of composition and design even then. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this was uh, from a photography class. The picture on the left I took with a Graflex two and a quarter, three and a quarter focal plane shutter, old time box camera. Everyone else was using 35s. And this was this beautiful girl I found who modeled for me, let me take her picture. Uh, the photo on the right is one I did recently of this one in one of those A artificial intelligence color programs. So it added color to my old black and white. Uh, that's my wife. We kind of became good friends and still are. This was me in college, my freshman year. My freshman year, I made varsity. There I am again. That's another one from the photography class. I'll get back for a second. I was on the freshman wrestling team. That was a mistake. First match, I lost by a knockout. Okay, this was the one I took for photography class. That's me. This is one of the few pictures I have of any of my artwork. That's a sculpture I did, the last piece I did in sculpture class, and it was in the traveling student exhibit at Kutztown when it, they had that. Uh, it's the only other piece I have from Kutztown. This I did in a weaving class. They did a free-form weaving, and the weaving professor liked it, and she actually hung it up in the art building for the whole semester. And she gave me a loom. She had a loom nobody would use. It was made out of aluminum. It was kind of a portable, and she gave it to me. So I did other weavings later on. That's the only two things I have from Kutztown. In my junior year, I got into the who's who in American colleges and universities. Uh, it was because of my arts classes, not my academic classes. Uh, okay, next picture. That's another one of the weaving. After I left college, I taught school for a year. My wife was a social worker. We bought a Porsche. Well, she bought the Porsche. And, uh, when we moved to Delaware, you didn't have to have bumpers on cars, just a, at least in the back, so I customized it a little. This would be like my actual first art project after college. And I kind of made it look like a, a Grand Prix type Porsche. Got rid of the front bumper, put a VW Nerf bar on it. Okay. This is a portrait of Mr. Brown. When I went, uh, I applied for the master's program at the University of Delaware. They didn't like my portfolio. And I said I could take three undergrad courses. If I got A's in all of them, they let me in the master's program. So this is the final project of a drawing course I took. Uh, the professor required each student in the drawing class to copy a master. And since I was the only one there with a the degree, he gave me Rembrandt. So this is me doing a portrait of my next-door neighbor, Mr. Brown, a la Rembrandt. And he said I also had to do some Rembrandt copies. And if he could tell they were copies, I couldn't get an A. It was only if I could do them good enough that he couldn't tell they were copies. So here's the copies I did. There's one. There's another one. And there's another one. There are three fairly well-known Rembrandts. Now I'm going to go back... When I showed these to the professor, I took photos of them. And I said, here's the copies. And I laid these three photos down. He says, well, why aren't you going to show me the photos? And I said, well, then you see it was on my paper and you know it wasn't a Rembrandt. So I said, which one's the forgery from these three photographs? It's, they're very good photographs. He looked at them for a while. And he finally looked at me and he said, I can't tell. And I said, does that mean I get the A? And he said, yes. And he said, which one's a forger? I said, all of them. <laughs> yeah, I did them all. This is uh, what my drawings evolved into. we like a back to that one. Well, I'll show you this. This was uh, the final project. I had a, our final exam and drawing. We had to draw this new to come into class. This poor girl had a rough night before. I think she was hungover, but she looked beat. 
And so trying to draw a la Rembrandt in 45 minutes, I worked about a half hour just on her face and 15 minutes like a gesture drawing for the rest of her body. And at the end of the class, professor came up and looked at us, well, says, it's the only one that looks like her. So I said, so I still get the A? He said, yeah. All right, so that was that. Now we'll go back to the very first one I showed you. Mr. Brown here made it into the Delaware State Art Show at the museum. Let's go back to him again. I'm right, getting used to this. So this was my first art show as a student at Delaware, but I still wasn't in the master's program. So then we went through this course. The next thing I took was a course in sculpture. This is the first sculpture I made at the University of Delaware. Okay, this picture, wait till I back up, it got into the next picture a little. Sorry about that. Well, this picture was taken at the New Jersey Museum at the National Painters and Sculpture Society National Art Exhibit. When I finished this project, I was studying under Joe Moss. He's an internationally, was an internationally known sculptor. He ran the sculpture department there. And after I built this piece, he gave me the form. He said, you ought to enter it in a competition. I entered it in the show, and it got in the National Art Show. Most of my sculptures, I wanted to make artwork that reacted to people. This one had a photo cell. Right in here, there was a photo cell. This box moved back and forth and made an optical illusion. A little box went in a big box. You'll see another one out. And there was a light here. And when it tripped the, you tripped the light, the box stopped moving. There was a bell in the box that would go ding. The box is blue. The big boxes were white. And there was a red light. So I call it the red, white, and blue ding. Uh, about two weeks after this got in the national show, they dropped the nine credit requirement and offered me a graduate teaching assistantship at the university. So from then on in, I was in the master's program. Uh, this was in my studio. You can see the box. Uh, there you can see the box, big box left, little box on the right. This is the only true color photo I took at the comp at the museum in New Jersey. This is uh, the Delaware State Art Show. I had it in that show also. This was my first sculpture as a graduate student. I took a Mini Cooper. I used to race them. And I uh, kind of modified it slightly. Now this reacted to people in the very front. Right in here, I had a photo cell. These had electric lights behind them. And in the trunk, I had a recording of a V12 Jaguar on an 8-track. When you'd walk in front of the, the light beam, the lights would flash, and this 12-volt engine sound would rev out the back of the car. And I was called Mini Mini Cooper. Uh, let me show you another shot of that. This is the Mini interior. I did some custom upholstery work to it. There it was on the lot at the university. This is in the Walnut Street Theater in Philadelphia. Uh, I had had a, a, a show, another previous show at the Philly Civic Center, and this was an invitational. They sent you a letter saying, we want one of your pieces in our show. So I took the mini in, and this was exhibited in the Walnut Street Theater. And it made the newspapers. Someone broke into it while I was in the theater, stole the tape player out. So it made the Philly papers artist vehicle tape player stolen while on a show. I got some publicity out of that. This is the publicity shot I took. That's my sister-in-law modeling with the vehicle. There it was in the studio getting worked on. This is my next project. Uh, I grew up in Middletown, PA. Across the Swatara Creek was Rolton, PA, and outside of Rolton, was a junkyard called Schneider and Baker. And they had, Middletown had an air base on the other end of town. And Schneider and Baker had military stuff in a junkyard and regular. So I visited there and actually a kid named, a fellow named Jim Rensel had been my friend, lived in the neighborhood, was growing up, was working there. So I would buy stuff there at a pretty good price. And this is a Mercury car hood, 53. And these were window frames 
from a cockpit of an airplane. They didn't have any plastic, and I and I made the plastic parts, the smoke-colored plastic, and this was my second sculpture. This one ended up in the regional sculpture exhibit in the Philadelphia Civic Center. There was actually, as you'll see, I made uh, three of these. This is the in my first one, well, two-man show. I was in a one-man show at a new gallery it's called Fifth Street Gallery in Wilmington, Delaware. There was a series of photographs of my sculptures. There's the OX3 in the gallery. If you look to the left, you can see uh, one of my other sculptures, a piece another. There's my the world's longest pull toy going across. So there's other pieces hanging behind us. There they are on the parking lot, University of Delaware. There they are in the student show at the student center. This was the grand opening. That was, they were set up on the floor. There's another shot at the student show. This was a uh, done at a show. I repainted them and I had a two-man show. Well, let's go back to that one. I forgot to put it on pause. This was done at, for Bloomsburg State University. I had a show there and I painted them because they had been scratched up, so that was another version of them. Okay. There they are in the parking lot again. This is another one of my sculptures. This one I call Prop Top. It was based on a, some of the old-time movies you'd see kids one of these shows with hats, beanies with little propellers. So I took an aircraft propeller and mounted it to a hard hat. Uh, called it Prop Top. Uh, there it is, another view hanging up out on the university campus. I was in the Fifth Street Gallery. Well, the unique thing about this thing, Fifth Street Gallery in 2012, I was in the very first show they had there. 2012, the state of Delaware Art Commission bought the gallery, so it's now part of the state. And in 2012, they uh, contacted me and wanted to, I was wanted to know if I would put a piece in their first show in the gallery. And I told them you know, I was in the very first show, and they were interested in that. And they said that this show was going to be a retrospect of the influential artists of Delaware of the 70s, and my name came up, so I got a show out of it. So that was in that gallery, 2012. This one's called Rocket Rocket. I, whoop, stop Rocket Rocket. Uh, back that one up. There it is. Put it on pause. It was an aircraft wind tank, and I did to what I did to the Mini. It made it look real clean. And I found a unique landing gear in my in-law's dump on the farm. Uh, it was on a leg brace. So this real clean thing, I had this really gnarly, nasty leg brace. I like that one. That's another one of my sculptures. This one was another one that reacted people. This uh, coat was uh, my father's uh, toolie coat when he go, would go up north to fix aircraft. He worked for the government. And a nose cone off an old airplane and a seat. Now inside this, this one reacted to people. Uh, this picture will show it. This camera had a photo cell behind it. And behind the photo cell... Well, it was hooked up to a vacuum cleaner, and the vacuum cleaner was up to a modified inner tube. I had each end going out these arms. When you break the light beam, it would inflate those arms, and they'd reach out at you. So it was kind of like a funhouse game. Okay, This is called Cart. It was shopping cart. I had a portrait of myself in a 3D VW engine, an aircraft propeller, this was in the Fifth Street Gravelly Show, and there's one of my other sculptures on the floor. That was called The World's Longest Pull Toy. So that's part of my first one-man show. There's a detail. There's the VWN, just as on the college parking lot. There's another shot of it on the parking lot. I changed the color of the helmet. And there it is again, and there's the, my Mini Cooper behind it. This one was called Mother Seat. This is another one from aircraft parts. It was a seat out of an airplane, uh, some suspension from a friend of mine's auto garage. And the reason I called it Mother Seat was the actual seat had a pillow in it, and on the pillow was embroidered the poem, M is for Mother. So this one was a little creepy. But there it is. There's another view of it. 
I'd push this around the school parking lot. There it is compared to a Volkswagen. It was a pretty good size sculpture. And one more shot of mother seat. Detail. And there it is in a lot with my mini off in the distance. This one was kind of a cool idea. I had a one-year-old son while I was here, and I would take care of him sometimes, even on campus. And he had a pool toy, and I decided to make a big pool toy. This thing was 200 feet long. This was irrigation uh, tubing. And I got these wheels from a wheelbarrow factory. It had been in a flood, and they were all covered with mud. And they gave me a real good price. So I had 50 sets of wheels. You could actually pull this, and it would follow you around the parking lot. The whole thing kind of snaked. There's another shot of it. But that was called the world's longest pull toy. And I know, it's a little strange. This was a race car I bought. Uh, I, when I first bought it, it wouldn't run. I just weren't got it running. I had it on the, in my in-law's farm. It had a kind of a semi-abandoned farm road. And I took it out and test drove it. It would blow that Camaro off in the distance. It would go up to about 140. Well, anyhow, when I test drove I hit the brakes one time and they failed and I went through a cornfield and I decided to retire it from racing and this ended up as car. I took the driver area out and I had hoses with gloves and I had hands coming out and it was actually like reaching for the steering wheel. So it was kind of a car that would drive itself. Uh, this was my brag board. My professor Joe Moss had a brag board and he said I should get one too. So. As I had news articles and things made up, I'd paste them up on this board. Like, there's a shot from Motor Trend magazine, Wilmington paper. There was the race car before I trashed it. Um, I, I was working on a patent back then even. There was a, my patent ID card. Uh, these are from some of the gallery shows, Walnut Street Theater, and a bunch. But anyhow, that was my, my brag board. That was in my studio. Uh, that's a shot of one of my sculptures. This was aircraft, wings off a drone, World War II drone that pulled targets. And another one of those windshields like you saw in the OX-3. Wheel from another sculptor. There's the rocket rocket under progress. Okay, there's... This one's called Wings. Was, I had it hanging up on the campus for a while. There's another shot of it in the state art show. And another shot of it. Should be one more, I think. Oh, okay. This one is called Wings and Wheels. I'm, these are another wingtips, and I cleaned them up. Uh, there's a shot of them in the Bloomsburg University, the one man show I had there. So I had them there, and I had them in a the student show. Uh, there's a publicity shot with me, and you can see the pool toy along the wall. There's another shot of wings and things on the campus parking lot. Another publicity shot. There's the card in the gallery show. And this was uh, the one man, this was the show at the student building at university. Uh, I had floor space. I was the only grad student in it. This is, uh, there's the Mini Cooper again. Whoa, back up. At the Walnut Street here. Now, after I got out of the university, I taught school for a year and then I got into, I just couldn't teach anymore. I get into doing a freelance commercial art and I also start up a buckle company and I design belt buckles. I have no copies of it except I found pictures. If you go on eBay now, type in my name, Nick Snook, not Marshall Snook, uh, and you'll, stuff like this comes up. These are people, these go for like 35 to $50 now. Back then I sold them for five. But I'd make molds up and cast them out of pewter. Okay, and that was one of them. Another thing I did, I built costumes. This was me and a seven foot four Bigfoot. Well, let's go back to Bigfoot. I was seven foot four. That's my daughter, Christina. But I did things, uh, shopping mall openings. Uh, I did the Harrisburg auto shows, I did hunting shows, and I set up a booth at some of the hunting shows, you have your picture taken with Bigfoot. I, I'd make 500 bucks a weekend with this, quote, three-dimensional sculpture. It's just I worked it from the inside. 
that's uh, one of the sculptures I, I a buckle I designed for a company called Efronsi. They were whoops, let's go back. They were the largest belt buckle manufacturer in the world. They also made urethane wheels for skateboards. I was actually pursuing them in a lawsuit, and uh, I was suing several companies for stealing my copyrighted designs, including them. And they, I worked out a deal where I did some work for them and got some money out of them. This is one of my original buckles. I found this on, on I think, Etsy or something. Well, let's go back to that. Thing keeps getting ahead of me here. But that's one of my pewter ones. That's a better photo I found of one. I'll show you how they were made later. Uh, I also did some airbrush work for a t-shirt company. I don't know if they had the copyrights for this stuff, but they paid me for the work. That's one of them I did, uh, John Travolta. Uh, I did the, this one, this one's a belt buckle I did. That was uh, using my Rembrandt style drawing. And, this is how I made my buckles. I'd draw that and send him a photo engraver. He'd make a metal plate, and I could turn it into a, a mold and cast that drawing as metal. There's Donnie and Marie airbrush I did. Uh, we won't say that one, but there it is. That's another one of my uh, belt buckles. That's an actual photo of a buckle. Again, I found these on the Internet. That's a custom piece I did for Harrisburg East Mall. They wanted a Frosty the Snowman. So this thing was eight foot tall. It's made out of foam rubber and silicon. And all those little circles, decorations, were actually one-way mirrors. So the operator inside could move around, see people, shake their hand, things like that. It was, they used that for several years as a Christmas attraction. I think I got $3,000 for that back then in 1977. Wow. Another one of my belt buckles. You could get pretty good designs. This was a, another drawing that turned into a belt buckle. Just want to show you how my drawing, that's the one I'm more popular said, just want to ride my motorcycle. Little Harlow Guthrie there. This is another airbrush. For some reason, some of these got moisture on them. And there's another airbrush I did. Then I started getting into doing people's portraits. I was the local postman. Uh, that's my uncle and aunt. It's from a photograph. That was a Mr. Widener, a gentleman from town. That was the, our Cub Scout gang. Uh, for those from Middletown, on left or right, Larry Warrick, Sid Snook, Johnny Nice Wonder. Ooh, I can't remember. Oh, oh, David Irby, that's me. Larry Smink, Mike Schaefer, Jim Hurst. Somewhere I have that photograph I'll have to find and put up. I was an old, first, the second car I can remember riding in, an old Nash. That's a, from a picture I did a pen and ink when we were in Mexico. Found this cool photo of a train. I just did a drawing of it. That's one of my favorite cars, Bug Eye. Uh, this one I like. This was a girl who worked at the mall, and she just... Almost had that Mona Lisa look, and I talked her into modeling for me. And I entered this as a pen and ink and watercolor. One of the first ones I did like that. Entered that in the Harrisburg City Show. I forget who was putting on. I got honorable, an honorable mention for that one. Another uh, portrait of some wall walkers. This is surrender I did cutting stencils. That's a stencil I cut on my wife some other objects, plus I use saw blades. I did all the painting with a toothbrush. I dipped the toothbrush in paint and flick it on the stencil and I got this really heavy textural type of painting. It was fun, I did a couple of these. There's another one. It gave me a lot of control over color and it design. I like contrasty images. Then I did this one, I made, cut out a trace, made a stencil of that airplane and those gears. This one is, uh, when I was a kid, my dad had an archery shop, and he had a lathe where you'd put arrow shafts in, and they'd spin them, and you'd take a brush, and you'd paint stripes on the arrows. It uh, uh, was called cresting. And like an archery club of 100 guys, each had their own crest arrow, so when they all shot into the target, they knew which arrows were theirs. And if they lost an arrow, and of course someone found it, they'd get their arrows back. Well, I made a little bit bigger lathe, and that's PVC tubing, and I just... Uh, 
painted those and then made this sculpture out. I about did about three of those. There's another close-up of one of my toothbrush paintings. Then I get into doing pen and inks and watercolors. Uh, you remember that Rembrandt copy? Well, I had a photograph, so I printed up the photograph of Rembrandt, and I said, what if James Dean was drawing Rembrandt from inside the picture? That's where this, this is how my thought, so I drew a body, and then I drew James Dean as the person on the body, because I didn't have James Dean posing like that. And then I added what I do. So this became one of my first of those types. Okay. This is a portrait of my daughter when she was in middle school. That's Christina. Uh, I took a lot of my later drawings. Once I got that pen, anything going, and I made videos, which you can see any of my videos by just going to Marshall Snook on YouTube. This is a cover page. This is one of my, this was a Shadow Girl project. This is just the, the, the cover for the video. I designed, well, I'll show you in the next picture when it comes up here. What I do, I take one of my drawings and I repeat it a bunch of times and I take a still and I make an animation out of it. There's another cover page for one of my videos. There's a, the original, pen and ink and watercolor. There's the original of the original, portrait of my wife. There's a picture of my wife, but I work off photographs. Uh, there's me working off a photograph. I think I have one more detail, a little bit closer. Those, those would take about a week to get finished. And there's the finished piece. Again, these were designed to be looked at with 3D glasses. All these brilliant colors, I'll stop this one. When I design, well, let's back up onto that one first. When I design my... Uh, what we can do with it. When I design my photograph, my pictures, I make the outer... Whoa, boy, it's getting ahead of me here. Let's get back to that one and stop it. All right. Come on, get back here. Stop. All right, this was uh, the outer edge. When I made my videos, and if you go look at them, you notice these outer edges become almost important as the portrait. They design kind of unique visual patterns. Uh, that's why you see these borders all go off the edge because they interact with themselves. I recommend this is some sketches. When I get bored, I would do sketches. There's another concept sketch. Oh, I'll back up for getting a couple more seconds. There's the concept sketch. Pen and inks. I never did any with these except uh, there was another one. Sick of doing paintings of them, but I haven't done anything. A little bit of an Escher esque type one. I just, if I'm bored, I got to draw. That's just me. I don't know what that one is. There it is. This is the only watercolor I've done in probably 50 years. It's a, called Isle of Shoals Lighthouse. It's off of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. We took a boat trip and I just was intrigued. It was kind of a creepy place. So that's the only watercolor I've done. This is how I'm one of my favorites. This is I call Marilyn and the Bomb. It's a one of my first full-color pen and ink watercolors. Well, it's all pen and ink, no brush. Uh, this was from a black and white photo some photographer took of Norma Jean before she became Marilyn. And I had, tried to make it in color. And then I threw this little cloud in the back. People who are millennials don't know what that is. So they don't get... Uh, but when I was a kid, one of the first movies my sister took me was one that had Marilyn Monroe in it. And, this is back when you went to school and you had to crawl under your desk when the bomb sirens went off. So this is kind of memories from my childhood. So here's Marilyn. There's the bomb. Yeah, that's an A-bomb. <laughs> this is the shot of my wife, Betty. This was another one of my pen and ink and watercolors. I threw, copied the Porsche by pen and ink and her. That's a portrait of my wife, pen and ink. This was how I set up my movies. I do a whole bunch of images, then I'd digitally flip them around and stuff and make copies. And the images kind of, like I said, if you go on my website, you can see the actual videos. I just wanted to show you a still from the video. There's the original. And this is the Shadow Girl. This is 
uh, I go on DeviantArt, which is a, well, let's back up again. DeviantArt's website, art, I've been on so if artists put their work up. And this lady was modeling there, and I asked if I could use her image. She agreed, so I started working on this project. This is a part, this took me about two weeks of work. All pen and ink color. There's a finished version of it. And there's how I set it up for doing the videos. This one's really freaky. And there's a high HDR version of the, the drawing. And there it is with regular. This is another cover to a video. Okay, I, late, well, middle 90s, I went back to do some sculpture. I bought about 500 pounds of uh, alabaster from Colorado, and I just started carving. This one was called Cliff Sitter 1. First piece I made, and it was in the Northeastern Regional Art Exhibition in Montoursville, Pennsylvania. Uh, I had, it was a jury show. I had this piece in. There's another view of it. Another view of it, another view of it, another view, and this one was in the show. This was called Cliff Sitter 2. Don't know why I called it that. And that was the third piece I had. That one I did not enter in the show. This is what my current, current work is now. I've been doing, well, up to a few months ago, I was... I bought a whole bunch of end cuttings from an archery shop. When they make carbon arrows, they slice the ends off. And I figured I could make a nice, lightweight, strong sculpture. And so this was this has about 4,000 pieces of carbon in it. And then I painted it with acrylic. And I use very brilliant colors. If you look at the 3D glasses, these balls float in space. There's a video of this, how I make them, and a video of these things on my webpage on YouTube. Marshall Snook at YouTube. There's a close-up shot of it. Again, but I sell the 3D glasses. I have info on that on YouTube. If you can get these Chromadept 3D glasses, these things, it's an optical illusion upon an optical illusion. Okay, this is what I'm doing currently. I decided, I have been working with a computer, I decided to uh, try to sculpt digitally with a collage program. So I copied literally hundreds of different colored spheres I found on line and then I turned them into cutouts and I make a collages. This is a, a collage I made based on my wife. I put her back on my wife so you can see her in the grass. There's another collage of my wife. These I used in some other designs. I just want to show you. There's how they look when they were cut out, cut off of. This is the optical contusion I did with my wife's actual photos. I built those backgrounds. I was doing these with a Sculptus 3D graphics program. And then I added my program images over the other program and create these compositions. This is a real optical contusion if you use the glasses. And then I made it even worse. I put images of my wife grafted into that optical illusion. She's almost invisible. When you put the glasses on, this thing goes really crazy. There's Betty's in snow. Another set of Betty's in snow. That's sitting and standing Betty's. There's Betty's in an optical illusion tunnel I built. So I'm sculpting digitally. There's Betty in the woods. That's my latest one. Betty on ice. <laughs> One, two Bettys in the tunnel. There's Betty and Betty standing beside each other. Another Betty sitting in the woods. Betty's by the ocean. Whole bunch of Bettys. Uh, you look at this one for a while, you go, and then I did even worse. A whole bunch of Bettys uh, with the 3D glasses. This one's crazy. This is a video still from one of my animated videos I use with Betty. Let me back up to that again. I have several of these where I actually took my 3D art and my other art and combined it. This is one I call Uh-Oh. 
I just had that, did that on the spur of the moment. Now these are optical contusions. These are what I was doing with all those spheres. I was making optical illusions, but doing them in color. Uh, and I did a bunch of this, and I, before I said, why not put Betty in them? And these, with the 3D glasses, I think it could almost give you a seizure. Most of these took about at least a week to compose. One ball at a time, that's how you build them. Here's another one. This one really goes crazy with the 3D glasses. A few more. We're getting near the end here. I hope you're still awake. <laughs> 